morning y'all happy uh well actually uh good afternoon now happy uh sunday to you hope uh, everybody's having a good day let me turn on my dark theme here so i'm not we're not looking at too much glare on my glasses well i can't do that it won't let me so no big deal uh welcome to live q a number uh 13 and this is all about the video that I posted this morning on five things that I would like to see new CNCers stop doing. And it's, uh, the, I'll tell you, the reception is kind of surprising me. I really didn't expect um, the kind of commentary that I got. I welcome it. Thank you very much for uh, commenting, all the likes, a few shares, and... Um, I want to kind of explain a couple of things before I get into your questions, and I do want some questions. Um, but before I do that, let me go ahead and say howdy to the folks out here in the live chat. We got Steve Nealon from Harneal Media, Webmaster to the Stars. Uh, we got uh, David Crook, Dave Krause, Leo Steger, Marcel Pro. Kevin Ells, John DeRoos, Jason Pulliam, Patrick's Workshop, Alan Prince, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. I know Alan is overseas, and I'm sure Kevin, <laughs> you're up past your bedtime, aren't you? Bob Heltebridal, TRS DOS 1, good morning. Bob Lee, KTWSC in South Carolina. Dave Clemens, good morning, y'all. Um, a couple of things I wanted to talk about in that video before I got really hot and heavy into questions. Um, first of all, thank you for the response. It's been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, but somebody did ask the question why I felt the need to publish it. And I felt the need to publish it basically because... As admin in a couple of CNC groups and as a member of several other CNC groups, I've seen a lot of people here lately uh, just absolutely beating themselves up and trashing themselves because they don't know everything all at once. And I mean, what got me started in doing Vectric tutorial videos was I watched a guy who got so frustrated with his machine with trying to learn the software that after spending a ton of money, he just sold it for a criminally low price and just cut all ties with everybody in the CNC community. And I had tried to help him, but some things are hard to do in text. And I have, I've watched another fella who uh, some of you may know get so frustrated with his machine, he just basically shoved it off the work table onto a wheelbarrow and moved it outside and traded it for another tool and took a, took a loss on the whole thing. And basically put, I'm seeing a lot of people beat themselves up in just in little comments. They'll post a picture of a project and say, well, I know this isn't up to the standards that you usually see posted here. And that kind of, that bothers me. So I started seeing too many things like that where people are getting frustrated that they don't think they're up to snuff. And it just isn't the case. I mean, you can't learn everything all at once. That's just flat out impossible. Um, Leo Steger over here in the live chat says he has been machining for 45 years and he still learns things every day. That is life. That's real life. There is no truer statement than what he just said. You will learn every day. It's impossible to know everything. You can only, you can only improve as fast as you can improve. And you can only get as good as you allow yourself to get. So 
I kind of contradicted myself between number four and number five there, where I said, don't punch above your weight. Don't try to dive in all at once and start with the most difficult project out there. But then I came back and said that um, you are doing the best you can with the information, the education, and the skills that you currently have right now. What I meant by that is, don't be afraid to push yourself, but you have to learn the basic rules about the tools before you can move on to something as advanced as like a guitar neck or a guitar body. I mean, I've been doing this for five years, and that's not a long time, but I still haven't carved a guitar neck on the CNC. And I don't know when I'm going to get to it. It's just, a lot of it is just timing. But there's a lot of steps involved to get up to snuff. And what I'm a big opponent of is I'm a big opponent of self-sabotage and setting yourself up for failure. So if you start with something that is pretty complex and things don't go right at first... It's real easy to get discouraged and just decide this isn't for you and get rid of it. I mean, we have all made a lot of firewood. Everybody who has a CNC has made a lot of firewood. And so you're not inadequate <laughs> if you make mistakes. You know, I, I can't, I really can't count the number of fence boards and pieces of two by four and pieces of two by six. I have carved up with the CNC, either learning a process or perfecting a method or something to that effect. It's real, it's real easy. It's a cliche for us to say practice in scrap, but I'm telling you, I'm still on that fate um, on Craigslist free section daily looking for somebody who's got a bunch of scrap wood they're wanting to get rid of before it goes to a landfill. So you know, that was my point in this, is to not beat yourself up so much. So, let me kind of go through here. The chat's moving pretty quick. Let me kind of go through here and see if we any uh, we have uh, uh, any questions here. Terry Murphy says, that video works for scroll sawing, carving, turning, 3D printing, and a lot more. Terry, I got... I, I got some of the ideas that I put out this morning on that video from a lady, and I, I really don't remember her name. I saw a video, oh, it's been a while back now, and I've looked for it. I can't find it. Uh, otherwise, I would link it here. She's a quilter, and she did a, a similar video on three things that she wishes quilters would stop doing. And that was a big inspiration for doing this. But as I said, it was mainly the fact that I've seen a lot of people here lately just totally trashing themselves because they don't think they're up to snuff. So, yeah, it, it does. Um, you know, I, 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 uh, I don't tell the story very often. But when it comes to being your own harshest critic and just going ahead and accepting a compliment, uh, somebody that I knew a few years back saw a piece of my work, and I had a lot of respect for her, still do, have a lot of respect and love for her. She saw a piece of my work and she said, that's absolutely fantastic. And I started pointing out mistakes and she just kind of looked at me and said, are you calling me a liar? I said, I liked it. And that made me kind of stop and think, whoa, wait a minute here. <laughs> you know, don't take it that way. <laughs> but yeah, um, it, uh, it does apply to a lot of situations. I mean, we get into the bear trap of it, it. And I refer to it as the squirrel cage where the brain keeps running around. I should have done this. I could have done that. Oh, that's not up to snuff. And pretty soon, next thing you know, you just want to throw it away when all it is is something that can usually be fixed or something that somebody wouldn't even notice. I mean, I, I don't have a photo of it, but I my oldest granddaughter is a huge fan of the uh, comic book character Harley Quinn. 
And some of you have seen on Facebook, I posted a uh, picture of a project I made for her where I V-carved a portrait of Harley Quinn in a piece of wood. And it wasn't until I had given it to her that I noticed that the grain of the wood, there were a few uh, bird's eyes in the grain of the wood, and it looked like she had a line of pimples running down her nose. And had I taken a closer look at it, I, oh man, I probably shouldn't have done it on that piece of material. I should have moved over a little bit so it could be off of her face. She didn't see it. She didn't care. She loved it. It bugs me to this day, but she loves it. So, you know, who am I to judge? <laughs> so, uh, let's see here. Um, Alan Prince, I know my machine very well, but I still test complicated jobs on MDF before using good timber. Oh, there is nothing as disheartening as messing up an expensive piece of material. And so that's why I don't do it. I practice on just any kind of old scrap wood that I can get my hands on. So, uh, Jim Hester, you gave sage advice in the video. Well, thank you. I was sitting there frustrated because I couldn't get a minute imperfection out of my design. And after watching it, I had a whole new perspective. Thanks. Well, you're very welcome, Jim. I need that too. I need that a lot. Um, I, my design consultant is my wife and I'll have her look at it and then I'll focus in on something. I'm trying to clean this up and she'll just say, back up. That's something that's very easy for us to do in our software. We can zoom in to a point where what we're looking at is so small. We are zoomed in so close if we just back up and look at the whole thing, look at the big picture, it's not even noticeable. Just let it go, you know? <laughs> so, but it's that striving for perfection that constantly gets me. But yeah, sometimes I have to get up and walk away from it. Uh, you know, you have to just to kind of clear the brain, especially when I get to a certain frustration level. It happens. It's easy for me to say, don't get frustrated. And I got frustrated editing that video. So, <laughs> oh man. So let's see. Uh, Jason Pulliam, I started with 3D printing after years of a friend trying to talk me into it. And that helped me learn G code. You know, Jason, I still haven't learned really much G code at all. I can read a few things in it. But if I have to go in and fix some code, uh, I'm, I'm hosed. I just start over. I go back to the Vectric software and work out what I did wrong there. I don't even try to chase G code. So, uh, Todd HC and C said he broke a ton of bits too. I hate knock on plastic. I have not broken a bit yet cutting. Maybe I'm chicken. I don't know. I was taught to start conservative and bump my way up and get to the point to where I start hearing chatter and then back off a little bit and let it go. So, while learning, buy cheap cutters. And after you've learned, Leo, keep buying cheap cutters. If they're good, I figure if a bit is good enough to survive me learning how to use it, that's a good bit, and I'm going to keep getting those. So, <laughs> uh, let's see... David Duxbury, hi Mark, I found there's lots of help online, certainly helped me through the right rough spots. Absolutely, um, there are some fantastic face group, Facebook groups for CNC, there are, are some fantastic resources online, and I wasn't I was going to include it in the video, it didn't make it into the final edit, um, I plan on doing, I, I'm going to dedicate a, a separate video to this subject, is don't forget your manufacturer, your CNC manufacturer's support forum. Every CNC manufacturer worth their own weight anyway has a support forum. So if you have 
a, uh, a Laguna or a Shapeoka or an X-Carve or digital wood carver or something like that. doesn't matter who it is, a, a work bee, a open builds, ox builds, whatever. There is a support forum for it. And that is the, pl the place to ask your technical questions because those are the people who know the machine best. There are representatives of the companies as well as other users who know your machine. And they are the people to go to for technical information. And it's the same with software. You know, uh, use those support forums. They're a valuable source of info because there are very few questions that you could ask that somebody hasn't already asked. And if it hasn't been asked, post it. You will get an answer. So, let's see. Oswell Perry, what is the best way to learn how to do 3D carving? Get into the tutorials. That, I know it's, it's a blanket statement, but it depends on the software you're using. Get into the tutorials and follow along as the tutorial is running. You know, um, have a session of your software open and follow the uh, tutorial. So I do have a playlist on uh, my YouTube channel here. Uh, I've done a little bit of 3D carving on video. And I've posted a playlist. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video when we go live. Well, when it goes live, after we're done here. But um, just basically get into the, the tutorials for your software. And practice, experiment, especially on scrap material, as I said. <laughs> uh, let's see. Tresdos, sorry about uh, misspelling your... Uh, mispronouncing your last name, excuse me, or your name. My CNC has a Y and A slaved. Question, in Mach 3 motor tuning, are Y and A supposed to be exactly the same? Um, I believe they should be, but I believe in Mach 3, if they're slaved, it doesn't matter. Uh, the A is going to follow whatever the settings for Y are. Um, Dave Gatton is in. Okay, I see he answered that. Yeah, okay. There we go. I'm behind. Uh, let's see, David Crook. I've been in photography since 1975. An old saying that applies here. The only difference between a profession and an amateur is the size of the trash can. Um, I've heard that. I've heard that. Uh, my mother-in-law was a uh, freelance photographer. And uh, her husband was a darkroom tech. The family joke was they didn't know what one another looked like for the first six months they were married. So, you know, yeah, that is the truth. Um, the, the experienced user has just made that many more mistakes, and that's where the uh, experience comes from. So, Donnie Garcia, hi all. I'm brand new to CNC and just listening in. Welcome to the addiction, Donnie. Um, there's still time. You can get out before it costs you too much. But I have a feeling if uh, you're here, it's already too late for that. So welcome aboard. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Todd H. CNC, my machine has done everything I've asked it to, good and bad. Yeah, that's something I didn't tag on when I said in the video. The good thing about a CNC is it does exactly what you want it to. I said this part. The bad thing about a CNC is it does exactly what you want it or tell it to. What, and what I forgot to add was whether you want it to do that or not. Because if... You design something and the G-code says it's going to lift up and move over two inches and you've put a clamp between here and there, it's going there. Whether that clamp is there or not, it just doesn't care and it's not going to stop until that clamp either stops it or breaks the bit. So it's going to do exactly what you tell it to do, whether you want it to or not. So uh, just about every mistake I have ever made was self-inflicted. 
So um, a little tip let me throw at you is I totally rely on checklists. Use checklists. You know, um, it, even if I've already done it what I think is a thousand times, even if I do it every day, it's on a checklist. Because about the time I think I have it down pat, I'll forget a step and either break something or mess something up. So, uh, Tres Dos, I just crashed mine last night, still repairing. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Um, Bob Hiltabridal, my first project was a double-sided sign. I was the happiest guy on the planet when it turned out great. You know, every victory is uh, tempered by a mistake, but I'm with you there. You know, I've been running this particular, my Gatton CNC, for two years. And I still, when I go out and I turn it on, I'm, I turn into a five-year-old. Now, Dave and a few other people keep telling me that one of these days you'll get tired of watching it go around and around. And I'm happy to say I have not yet reached that point. I don't stand there and hover over it, but I do watch it. You know, I'm doing something else, but I'm looking over, watching it. And nothing excites me more than when I first turn on Mach 3, then turn on the controller, and the steppers lock up. Everything powers up, the steppers lock up, and I hit that reset button, and I move move it a little bit. Like, dang, it's just fun. It's just cool. I'm sorry. Then, you know move it close to the uh, limit switch limits or the homing switch limits, ref all home, and it just starts doing what I told it to do. That's still a bit of excitement for me. So um, let's see. Um, Jason Pulliam, I ran a marker in my CNC for the first few days. It's funny you should mention that because... Dave Gatton over on his web, uh, on his YouTube channel, and if you're not uh, subscribed to Dave Gatton, you really should be. Whether you run a Gatton CNC or some other brand, it doesn't matter. Uh, he's got a lot of great videos. He hosts a weekly live show on Saturday nights. Um, sometimes they have a topic that they spend a lot of time talking about. Other times, it's just a Q&A session. But Saturday, see, so that was last night, he had Jim Sinicola on his show, and they spent an hour, a little more than an hour, talking about mounting a Sharpie pen and a 3D printed drag knife on the CNC and running them. It was real interesting. It was a lot of good information. And when this video goes live, I'll put a link to it down in the description. It's a little over an hour long, but it's well worth it. Jim has made some very cool pen holders and uh, a drag knife for cutting vinyl paper, cardboard, whatever. That was a very cool video. So I'll put a link to it down in the description. And uh, I plan on sharing it in a couple of groups because I've seen a couple people asking about drag knives. So... Let's see. Um, uh, Jay Colker. Hi, Mark. Great starter info. Thanks for helping me how to understand how not to be so hard on myself. Three-month-old beginner. Any numeric keyboard recommendations? Um, for numeric keyboard, I'm not sure I know what you mean. Um, let's see. A numeric keyboard? Uh, do you mean like a pendant or something? I don't use a pendant. I use either my keyboard or I have an Xbox 360 controller. Um, I hook that up. I use Mach 3, so it may or may not help you. I don't know. I'll put a link to a video over on the Guru Brew YouTube channel. I'll put a link to the video on how he hooked up an Xbox 360 controller to Mach 3 for his CNC. 
And that's exactly the same thing I did. I followed his video, and um, that's how I got my Xbox 360 controller set up. Uh, let's see. Tress Doss, always check plunge rate. Yes, always check plunge rate, especially if you're using a tiny bit diameter. So... Uh, let's see, Jim Hester, in the video, I was trying to guess how big of a shop building you're going to have space to build in your yard. Any estimates? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, I do not endorse this approach, okay? So there's my disclaimer. I do not endorse this approach. In my county, I can build up to 200 square foot without a building permit. So I'm not building one shop. I'm building two shops real close together uh, because of the shape of my yard and where everything is located. I'm going to be building two 12 by 16 shops. So I'll have four times the space I have now plus my little 6 by 12 lumber shed. So um, yeah, I'm going to be building two 16 foot wide, 12 foot deep shops, putting them real close together with sliding doors in between so I can step from one to the other. And they will be insulated and uh, so I can have heat and AC out there in them, which I don't have now. So, let's see. Um, Johnny Shoemake, new to CNC and started with a Laguna Swift 4x4. Remember my father's favorite saying, don't go to bed as dumb as you got up. You know what, Johnny? Those are uh, those words are more are truer than you will ever know. And in fact, I think I'm going to cut that into a sign and put that up above the exit door to my shed. Don't go to bed as dumb as you got up. That's that's a um, good words to live by. Uh, just for small, okay, Jay Kolker, uh, just for smaller controller for movements. Okay, I, I, like I say, I don't know what controller software you're using. I don't know if you're using Mach 3, WinCNC, um, Linux CNC, or anything like that, or something proprietary. Um, if you have, like, uh, a Laguna or a, um, shop bot i know or even a i think it's digital wood carver and the axiom they're all proprietary i would um i would uh, check with the manufacturer of your machine because many of them have pendants dedicated to them so Let's see, Bob held to bridle. I have a Bluetooth number pad that I use as a pendant. Okay, that's new to me. The old com computer I'm using out there doesn't have Bluetooth. So I, I don't have uh, any kind of networking capabilities at all on that computer. It can't go online. And um, its only purpose for living is to run Mach 3, and that's it. I don't have anything on it. So, uh, win CNC on a shop saber. I would get a hold of shop saber. I would get hold of shop saber and talk to them about some sort of a pendant or a uh, number pad for controlling the machine. So, um, one last thing I wanted to talk about as far as this morning's video was concerned. Um, I already mentioned that I was contradicting myself between number five and number four. And one, I'm saying start small. And then I'm saying go ahead and push your knowledge and limits. What I meant is after you have learned the machine a little bit, don't be afraid to experiment. Um, and where I was going in number five is you need to learn the machine and learn its capabilities before you really start trying to dive in. I mean, as uh, Tress Doss here mentions, always check plunge rates. It's real, real easy to get in over your head and bury a bit halfway through your uh, spoil board if you're not careful. And so 
I'm not saying don't be afraid to experiment. What I'm saying is get a little bit of knowledge on your machine before you start experimenting. That's all. Be a little bit cautious, but don't be afraid to get into your design software and draw. Don't be afraid to program, create projects, save G-code, go outside and cut them. Don't be afraid to do that. Um, I get emails from folks daily asking for advice on various things, and that's great. I love it, you know. But some folks appear to be to the point to where they're almost afraid to make a move on your on their own. Don't be. Don't be afraid to make a move on, on your own. If you're not sure about a... <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> if you're not sure about a feed rate or a plunge rate, start low. Start conservative and work your way up. If you start with something like a... Uh, 40 inch per minute feed rate and a 20 inch per minute plunge rate and that worked out fine or that was a little slow go ahead and bump it up next time and start you know when you find that sweet balance for you you know that's that's the one to go with uh leo stegger i believe that your cnc should never be connected to the internet it may do something not expected. That's true. That's very true, Leo. And uh, I mean, profound words, believe me. Um, I, I had somebody get a hold of me one time. This is about a year, year and a half ago, um, talking about how their machine just suddenly started going crazy and they couldn't figure out why. And we talked and we got into a hangout and this, that, and the other and come to find out he minimized Mach three and was playing solitaire while it was cutting, and it's like, well, what did you ex what did you think was gonna happen? I mean, you can't do that. Let it run. You know, I go out in my shed and I've got my tablet out with me. I mean, it all it does is it runs Mach three and that's it. So, <sighs> Oswald Oswell Perry, I use AutoCAD for some reason. I'm having problems on exporting to VCarve. Uh, export to DXF file format from AutoCAD and then import um, the DXF file into Vectric and you will have some cleanup to do. I've got a video or two on my channel. I'll look for those and link them in the description on how to import a DXF file. One word of advice I'll give you if you have drawn up a 3D file in AutoCAD export it as an STL file or one of the 3D model formats. Don't export it as a flat DXF because what will happen is the DXF file Vectric will import, you'll get the flat plane and that's all. Everything behind it on the back side and on the edges will be imported also and that can create some huge huge problems. So make sure it's a 2D um, DXF file. So let's see. Um, Tress DOS, I use an Xbox controller until I started using Xylotex. For some reason, now only works sometimes. Don't know why. When I turn on Xylotex, Xbox shuts off. Hmm. I'm not sure about that. Uh, you might have to get in and configure the um, uh, the uh, plug-in for the Xbox 360 controller. I have never had that problem before, and it might mean uninstalling that uh, plug-in and reinstalling it. You can give that a shot. So... Okay, do we have any further questions on this morning's video uh, as far as five things that I think the uh, beginning CNCer should, um, should stop doing? Any questions at all? So, 
If not, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll call this one good. Um, I want to thank everybody for the overwhelmingly positive response I got to that video. Y'all really stepped up and surprised me. I got to say, I... Um, <laughs> I have read every comment on the video, but I have resisted the temptation um, to reply to them. I will reply to every single one of them, but I wanted to address a lot of things here first before I went back. So now I'm going to go back and spend a little bit of time trying to find these links that I just mentioned and uh, and go from there. And then we'll, uh, I'll get all these links posted and then I'll go back and I'll, uh, I'll, uh, comment on all those comments. All right. Let's see here. Uh, why Bob P why is the front of my Gatton CNC cut deeper than 24 in back? I don't understand what that means. Um, I, I don't, uh, know what you're asking. Uh, you can get a hold of me. The best way to get a hold of me is to go to my website, link in the description, and use the contact us form um, on my website. I get a lot of message requests, private message requests, and what have you, and there are simply not enough hours in a day to respond to them. There really isn't. I do read every message that comes to me from the contact us list and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. I'm a little bit behind. I got to do that this afternoon, answer some emails. But as far as private message requests on any of my social media, there just aren't enough hours in a day for me to chat with everybody. So if you need to get in contact with me, hit my website sponsored by Harnail Media, marklindsaycnc.com. And uh, hit that uh, contact us link and send me an email. And I will get back to you just as quick as I can. So I don't see any uh, other questions. But uh, so, have okay, Bob Heltbridal, have you ever done anything with the molding toolpath in Aspire? Yes, sir, I have. Did a video on it a couple weeks back. There's another video going to be coming on it soon. I'm just waiting for an answer back from somebody, and uh, we'll get going on that video. I'll put a link to that one down in the description of this video, too, so there's a bunch of links I need to remember. Okay, um, next week, hopefully, it'll be um, back on track, either I haven't decided yet, software or a project. But, so until then, I will catch everybody later. Thank you again very much for the warm reception, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Y'all take care.